Christ of life, we bring you greetings from the Greater Refuge School of Ministries here in the city of Deland, where Bishop James Darby is our pastor, along with our First Lady Mother Frances Darby. So if you're just tuning in, please make sure that you like and share this Facebook recording on this morning. Be here to give God praise and to glorify him for who he is and for what he's done. So we just want you to magnify the Lord with us as we go on this morning in our service. And the Lord may bless you in a great way because we know the Lord is worthy. Hallelujah.
to the Refuge Global Ministry located at 316 South Adel Avenue in the our pastor is Bishop James Darby. We would like you to be able to participate in the ministry of giving. You would like to do so by way of PayPal. PayPal email address is the land refuge 386 at gmail.com. Again, the PayPal email address is the land refuge 386 at gmail. Givelify. Givelify is spelled G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. The name under Givelify is Greater Refuge Delaney. Again, the name under Givelify is Greater Refuge Delaney. Or you can also mail in your gifts by using the mailing address, again, which is 316 South Adel Avenue, Delaney, Florida. The zip code is 32720. Again, the mailing address, 316 South Adel Avenue, Delaney, Florida. The zip code is 32720. We would like you to know that this information will be pending on our live stream and that we are a 501c3 ministry. Thank you. Let us bow in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come, Lord, to your name. We thank you, God, for this is the day that you have made. And we're rejoicing. We're glad to be here today. We pray, God, that you would bless in a special way. As we bow before you, we ask, God, that thou would have mercy upon us. Forgive us, Lord, with our sins and help us in the name of Jesus, we pray, to be victorious in our lives. Lord, strengthen us where we're weak and build us up where we are torn down. We lift up. worthy of our praise. Amen. He's worthy to be praised and we give honor to him this Sunday morning. Amen. How many of you know that God will hold your hand no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with. He's able to keep you from falling and he will hold your hand. <laughs>
the best that I can while my way is so dark. You know I just don't understand. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I need you to hold my hand. Somebody come on and help me say that. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I need Say it one more time. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I need you to hold my hand. Can I say it one more time? Lord, you know that I'm your child. And I'm doing the best that I can. Say, oh, my God. 
you to hold my hand.
the Judaizers and legalizers, they preceded him. But Paul was determined to give his vision or his message relevant to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. So it says to them, for as much as in me is, I'm ready. I'm ready to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel itself, where it means good news. What is the basic consistency of the gospel? Is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There are three gospels, three gospels that the Bible speaks of. That is the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, the gospel of grace, or the gospel of Jesus Christ, in which I'm going to deal with today. And then there is an everlasting gospel that's preached by an angel at the end of the tribulation period. Now, the gospel of the kingdom was the gospel that Jesus Christ preached, John the Baptist preached, and the disciples preached the gospel of the kingdom. This message was saying that the Messiah, the King of Israel, is coming to restore the kingdom back to Israel. And the time was in hand for this to happen. The gospel of the kingdom was strictly to the Jews at that time because salvation was of the Jews. The Lord had not presented himself to the Gentile nations, but to the Jewish nations. Had they accepted Jesus Christ as their king, then he would have set his kingdom up. But thank God they rejected the king. And so therefore, he died on the cross. Now when Jesus says in chapter 24, verse 14 of the book of St. Matthew, yes. and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. There are those that use this text to propagate whatever they have in plans, especially the fundraising. The, but this gospel, the gospel that Jesus was talking about is not the gospel that we preach now. Jesus had not died. He had not risen from the dead. And so therefore, it brought a difference in the preaching after this. And this is the gospel to which we preach now. Now let me retro, retro, look, go back here. The gospel that they were preaching, they couldn't preach Jesus' death. They couldn't preach his resurrection because he had not died and he had not risen. And so the gospel is mentioned in 24 and 14 of the book of St. Matthew is relevant to the gospel that they preach and not the gospel that we preach today. So when ministers say, when this gospel, that's not the gospel that we preach today. Jesus was indicative, he was referring to the gospel that was preached at that day. Now Paul comes here, the Lord has died, he has risen from the grave, and now there is a new gospel. Death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now I say to them, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. It's this word here. In spite of all of those that he might stand up and they might come in opposition to him and what he is preaching, maybe perhaps even try to condescend or lower him down to another level intellectually. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to the every one that believes. God, I preach it. And this gospel, the basic power, is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is good news from the world. Everybody needs good news. Everybody loves good news. 
I'll tell you if Putin has some sense in calling all this terrible war is going on in Ukraine and stand up and announce that I'm wrong and I'm going to stop it. You penis, NATO, across the globe, everybody will be happy because it's good news. Yeah. Everyone will be happy. Just one command, push for that. And the world can engage itself in a war. A world war. Just one back to second. But if this has come to an end, or that it comes resolute to this problem, we will rejoice in America. We rejoice across European nations. And even some Russians themselves will rejoice. The world will rejoice. Because this is good news for the world. When World War II come to an end when President Ronald Reagan announced your mom and your sons are coming home. Why is your husband are coming home? War is over! They celebrated across the continental United States of America. Confederate was strong in New York City. Charleston and Boston, Massachusetts. Rejoicing down in Key West Park. The Pacific Coast of Los Angeles and San Francisco, up in the upper parts, Seattle, Washington. They were rejoicing because the war was over. But there's a better news than that. Men called Jesus died, buried, and rose again, and gave hope to the dying world. Everybody would have good news if it were not for the gospel. We could not declare that we're free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. Because the gospel has been preached. And not only that, but it has brought results. It is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes it. It brings men, it brings women to Christ. It brings freedom to the lost. You yeah. reverse the demoniac decisions. The devil declared, I got you locked up. You're going to stay locked up for the rest of your life. But the gospel comes. And when you leave it, my God, you step out. Lift your hands and praise. Free at last, free at last. Oh, thank God. Oh, my God. Free at last. The gospel separates. Lives brings a difference between a life of sin and a life of righteousness. It brings freedom to those that are incarcerated under the powers of Satan. Those that are locked up and can't help themselves. Bound in sin. Bound by body-destroying habits. Bound by mental problems. He said, I've come to set you free when it comes to the believing of the word of God. Somebody somewhere ought to give him a praise. Thank God for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm thinking here when Paul was singing in the hands of the great Christian philosophers who state of intimidation. They thought they were intimidating him. When he stepped out on Mars Hill, the Mars Hill, the philosophers that are going to the school of philosophy, Epicureans and Stoics, and they stood there just to convert themselves and learn new stuff and flex their muscles and boast in their philosophy. When G. Paul came preaching Jesus, Christ, and the resurrection. Oh God, I preach. They say, let us see what this babbler called and told a babbler. He just run in his mouth. Let's see what this babbler has to say. Oh God, I preach. Paul threw the circle on the old philosophy. 
But it did with us. He can't preach in Jesus. God, the only true God. God who made the heaven. God who made the earth. And then he threw one of the poets on him. You telling me about your philosophy? But I'm going to tell you what one of your poets say about this God. God, I preach. Oh, God, I preach. For in him we live, we move, and we have our being. Then he says, say the poets among you. That's what they say concerning the God that I'm talking about. It's called God, I preach. And we also are his offspring. I come to tell you, in spite of all this stuff, there's a man called Jesus. Oh God, I preach. There's a man called Jesus. There's a man called Jesus. And I'm not impressed. You're not going to intimidate me with your philosophy. I come to say the simple thing is a man called Jesus. He died on that cross. And three days later, he came up. Oh, God, I preach. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God of the salvation. The that would love to there be an absence of the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many have access to massive audiences every, every day of the week. Access to every nation almost on the face of the globe to preach the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. However, the message today is motivational stuff, blessings. God wants you to be blessed. Oh God, I preach. God wants you to be blessed. It's all about getting your dollar, getting money, getting, making decisions, and that's fine, that's good. But we cannot forget about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The money won't save you. Prosperity won't save you. Access to the tangibles of life won't save you. But the gospel will. There's power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody somewhere, give God a praise. Wherever you are, give him a praise and thank God for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, time came for him to time came for him to die for the world. He came to die. He came to bring a new gospel. And that's the gospel of grace. Yeah. Oh, God, I preach. The gospel of grace. Grace gives the what you know, deserve hell. Grace is God's unmerited favor to what undeserving mankind. We don't deserve to be where we are. We don't deserve to in the house of God, praising God. You wherever you are, it isn't because of your meritorious act or something that you earned. It is only about the grace of God. God had mercy. And when God's mercy grabbed us, grace cried out. And said, holy mercy until I get there. Oh God, I preach. Thank you, Jesus. Time came for him to die on the cross of Calvary. The devil has always, listen carefully to me, he has never underestimated his power. He wanted to kill Jesus. But he didn't really know what he was getting into. He knew what the scripture said, but he felt he has the authority and the power to override the scriptures. Why do you say this? When he was in heaven, he thought he could overcome God's kingdom. Rebel against God. He has never underestimated his authority and his ability. He figured he can do what he wants to do. That's in his mind. So that I killed Jesus, I'll solve this whole problem. Hmm. Oh yes. See, I can, I can kill him. 
When he turned the keys and Jesus stood there. She had to die like a natural man. She didn't die as a dog. He died as a natural man. He felt pain. He felt emotions. And let his grave seen. The Bible said he wept. He felt pain like you feel pain. He felt emotions like you now feel emotions. Because he was God inside of a man. Inside of a body. And the body was like your body and like my body. When he looked at death of the cross, if it was any way possible, because the divine part of him stepped back. As God, he couldn't die. But as man, he could die. Why is he going through this? Why? 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 Why should he go through this? There was something inside of God. The divine said God so loved the world. Love has everything to do with it. Why? 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 Why should he go through this? Something inside. See, the captain. But the man in this field cried out to the Father above. I said, if there's any way possible, in essence, to save the world, without me dying, I'd like to have it. He was facing death. That was not an exciting thing for him to do. Death is one of the most morbid experiences that we could ever face. Look at death. Mind perhaps reflected on Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When they all died. But he said, I don't want to die. But the man had to get strength from above. He went and nailed down in prayer. And his final prayer was this which was as synonymous to the second prayer. He said, not my will, your will be done. They were rejoicing, seeing him in his state here, not wanting to die. But he felt like he had, a, had an upper hand here. I got an upper hand on him here. But when he prayed that prayer, not my will, but I be done. Satan has not stood up a little bit. I got some waiting for you. It's that cross. When I take you to that cross and kill you out there, that's going to be your end. But he meant, my God, stood in the judgment of all. He mocked, laughed at him, stood in his face, slapped him. Every morbid thing you could think of. Crushed him up. Beat him. Oh God, I wish. Took his clothing off of him and stood him there in the nude. Shame. This old slavery songwriter wrote a song. See how they done my Lord. See how they done my Lord. He never said a morning word. They ripped him all night long. And they never said a morning word. See how they done my Lord. Isaiah said, even wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we healed. Stood there now, defending himself. Jerusalem was in an uproar. Heaven was quiet. The praise team in heaven stopped saying. Looked 
start off and get him to preach. Every time they hit him, every time they hit him, he had a reason. You were involved in everything that he went through. And everything he went through was for you and for me. But I tell you, God, somebody told me that Jesus loves you. Somebody told me that Jesus is in hell. This is good news. Somebody said, he is a way maker. Oh, yes, he is. Isn't he a way maker? Isn't he a way maker? Oh, he make a way maker. Oh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God under salvation. You know, sir, I love what Jesus told him. After the Holy Ghost, it has come upon you. You shall receive power. There's so folk that tell you if you get the Holy Ghost, you still got a little energy drinking, you can go get your nickel. You still smoking cigarettes. No, don't hear me. But you know what? You know, get to the point where you make you stop smoking one pack a day and smoke ten to get over it. Oh God, I praise you. But let me tell you something. When the Holy Ghost comes, you throw the cigarettes aside. When the Holy Ghost comes, you throw the liquor aside. God gives you power. When God fills you with the Holy Ghost, that's the power of God on the inside of you. So when God saved you, when you really saved you, not this new stuff for God going, Romans chapter 10 was not to set us, that was to the church. Read a few verses ahead of that. That was to the church. He was not talking to the sinner. He said the sinners appeared to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, God, I preach. And when, when Peter preached this first passage, oh God, he had to preach the death, the peril, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh God, I cannot let that. He preached, he'd been lying just a few days, a little over a month or so ago. He'd been lying. He denied Jesus. No, I don't know that man. Yes, you are. No! He got so mad, he started cursing. But now he got the Holy Ghost. Oh God, I pray you. The Holy Ghost gives you power. And that's what gave Paul the power to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. After Peter got the Holy Ghost, he stood up by the whole Jewish city, Jerusalem, for all of them. And he got to the preaching that God had made this same Jesus. He denied him at the crucifixion, just at the crucifixion. He said, I don't know him. Now he sat up before the whole city. Thousands of Jews. I come and let you know that this morning you crucified. Oh, I pray. Something about the Holy Ghost didn't make a difference. Something about the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody something about the Holy Ghost. It gives a boldness. Something. Something about it. The Holy 